After rereading the question, the first thing that you want to do is draw a picture to represent the given information. We have a projectile being launched straight up with an initial velocity of 60 meters per second at a height of 80 meters. And then it's going to rise and it's going to reach a maximum height. And in part A, we have to find the maximum height of the projectile above the point of firing. So be careful there. We do not want the height above the ground in this question. We just want the maximum height above the point of firing. So if you look at the picture, again, the point of firing was located at 80 meters, and then it's going to rise a certain vertical displacement, and that is what we're trying to figure out, is that rise in vertical or increase in vertical displacement, we're going to call that delta Y. So this is a picture of the projectile up here at the maximum height. It's very important for this question to understand that the final velocity when the ball reaches that maximum height is actually zero meters per second. So we're going to make sure that we note that in our diagram, and then we're going to note that in our list of given parameters. So again, the final velocity is going to be zero meters per second. The initial velocity is positive 60 meters per second. Notice it's positive because the ball is being fired straight up. Now for any object that's flying through the air here on Earth, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We don't know the time, and then again, we're trying to figure out this change in vertical position, AKA the vertical displacement. So you'll notice that time doesn't really factor into our analysis in part A. So any of the equations that involves time, we can safely disregard. So for example, the first equation contains time, we don't need that. The second equation, same story. The third equation is the one that we need. Now notice it's written in terms of delta X, but we can also change that in terms of delta Y. So now we begin to plug in the known values into this equation right here. The final velocity again is zero. Don't forget to square it. The initial velocity was 60, and again square it, plus two times negative 9.8, and then times delta y. And so now the rest is just a little bit of algebra. We have zero is equal to 3600. When you multiply two and negative 9.8, you get minus 19.6 times delta y. Perhaps we can subtract 3,600 from both sides of the equation. This gives us negative 3,600 is equal to negative 19.6 times delta Y. And then of course, to solve for delta Y, we'll just divide both sides by the negative 19.6. And when we do that, we will get a value of 184 meters approximately is equal to delta Y. That is the correct answer to part A of the question. We can move on to the other parts and they actually kind of tie together because we need to find the time that it takes to hit the ground, but then we also need to find the velocity at impact once the projectile hits the ground. And it turns out it's actually a little bit easier to do part C first. If we do part B first, we end up needing to do the quadratic formula and who wants to do that? So we're gonna do part C first. We're gonna find the final velocity when the projectile reaches the ground. So when the projectile reaches the ground, it's now located over here. It's moving downward at that point with some final velocity. So perhaps what we can do is go back into our little table here and write down what we know. So the initial velocity is still 60 meters per second for parts C as well as B. The final velocity is no longer zero. We are actually looking for that right now. So we're gonna change that to a question mark. Acceleration is still negative 9.8. We currently do not know the time, but let's take a look at the delta Y for part C of the question here, because we actually do know the delta Y. And we know it because delta Y is the same thing as the final Y coordinate minus the initial Y coordinate. Well, if you look at the picture, the final Y coordinate when the projectile reaches the ground is actually zero meters. And the initial Y coordinate when the projectile is launched was 80 meters. So in other words, for the delta Y, we're going to have the final Y coordinate of zero minus the initial, which is 80, and that turns out to be negative 80. So that's our delta Y is negative 80. Now we're going to turn back to the equations of kinematics and we're going to try to pick the right one that's gonna give us the final velocity. And it turns out actually that this equation will be our savior for part C. Again, we'll change this to delta Y. We can write down that formula and then begin to plug in the known values. So the final velocity, we are looking for that. So we'll just write V squared. This is equal to the initial velocity, which is 60 meters per second squared, plus two multiplied by negative 9.8 multiplied by negative 80. 
So what you would do is pick up your calculator and process the entire right-hand side of this equation. Punch it in very carefully. You're going to get 5168. So now we have V squared is equal to 5168. And then finally, to calculate the final velocity, you just take the square root on both sides. Now, be careful here. We all learned in mathematics that when you take the square root of a number, you technically get both a positive and a negative answer. We have to go back to the picture and make a decision as to which one is most logical. Now remember, the projectile is located back at ground level right now. It rose up to its maximum height, it sort of turned around and came back downward. So hopefully we realize that at the end of its flight, down here at ground level, it is now moving downward. And because it is moving downward, we have to assign a negative to the final velocity. So in other words, the final velocity at ground level is negative 71.9 meters per second. So just be careful about that. That will be the answer for part C. And then for part B, we can now go back and figure out the time that it takes to hit the ground. And we can use the first equation from kinematics to do so. So let's jot that down here below. We have the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. We just determined the final velocity at ground level was the negative 71.9. The initial was positive 60. We have plus negative 9.8 times the time. <clears throat> Pardon me. We will subtract 60 from both sides. When we do that, on the left-hand side, we're going to get negative 131.9, roughly. This is equal to negative 9.8t, and then divide both sides by negative 9.8, and you're going to get about 13.5 seconds. And that's the time that it takes to reach the ground, and that is the correct answer for part B.